Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? No, do you need more? Is it something that you're searching for? Welcome back, everybody, to episode 34 of the Movie Rebrew Podcast. Our Paul Pierce podcast. <laughs> oh, he actually did the, the terrible Larry Bird joke. I am your host, Keegan Holland, and with me is my co-host, Mike Jennison. Hello, everyone listening all across the country <laughs> and the world. Welcome back to another episode of Movie. Movie. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Every week you disappoint me. Every single week. Oh, God. This week, we are talking about two movies again, another packed weekend. We are doing Bad Times at the El Royale, the Drew Goddard movie, starring Chris Hemsworth, Jeff Bridges, Dakota Johnson, John Hamm, pretty loaded cast, and also First Man, Damien Chazelle's third movie, starring Ryan Gosling and Claire Foy about the space landing, the Apollo 11 space landing. Um, More importantly, Neil Armstrong's life. Yeah, which is way more that than really the the last mission Mm -hmm. um this week uh we are not doing an october fest because kind of rushed for time i couldn't get one but we were doing an angry orchard in honor of the fall season where do you power rank angry orchard in terms of ciders when i was 17 years old i had a very tough experience with cider and ever since then i have not really enjoyed ciders i apologize then where do angry orchards rake rake um i like it better than reds and I've never you know, had I just, you know, I just found out. I've had Strongbone, actually. Strongbone's amazing. I think Strongbone's the best. Yes. But, have you had Ryan Guy's cider? Sorry, I'm, wait, go. <laughs> uh, red isn't cider. What is it? It's apple ale. What's the difference? I don't know, but I just found out yesterday, it's not actually, not yesterday, a couple days ago, it's not actually a cider. Hmm, I wonder if it's gluten-free then or not. <laughs> My mom asked that question today, because wow. she had one, and she's gluten-free. I am. Your mom has celiac disease? I think so. That's, oh. what, that's what it is, right? So do I. Nice, but yet we do a beer every we week. College just share recipes. <laughs> <laughs> we do you. do a beer every week. I give a little bit of myself up to you. Nice, I appreciate that. Yeah, you want to crack this open? You have a bottle opener. These are twist offs, right? I don't think no. I think they're made in Cincinnati, so they should be, but I don't think they are. You, know, you want to know a fun fact? Sure. If it's a twist off or not? It will actually say it on the cap. Sometimes. Most times. Probably most times. You're right. And this does not say twist, and I tried to twist it off, and it didn't work. Do you have a bottle opener? On the fridge. Is this you telling me to do it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Nothing to do not Saratus in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. We are not on two weeks. We're giving it up to... Oh, we're not on next week. No, next week we're doing mid-90s and... Next week's my sister's wedding, so give them, give the boys next week. Okay. Cool. Cool. Shout out to Megan Jennison and Nick Harvey. Shout out. For uh, getting married next week. Can you open this for me? My sister actually listens to the podcast because she's a nice sister, unlike my other two. <laughs> Hi, Megan. I don't think I par ranked mine. I don't like Angry Orchard. Do you like Reds? Um, I think I like Reds more than this. Hold on, let me because I, I had a Reds today, so let me just cheers. Cheers to the governor. This is better than Reds. Okay, this is actually good. This is actually really good. I remember hating this. I don't know why. Maybe it's only it's, Reds. It's no Strongbow though. Strongbow is definitely the best. Or maybe I'm over my kind of fear, and I can drink this. So why, why didn't you like ciders again? You just told the story. I had a very tough experience at one point in high school with ciders. Okay. I drank about 12 of those and, <laughs> and then threw up. I think you drink 12 of anything, you're probably going to have a bad experience. I Isn't that weird that if you throw up on something, you can have it for like another like six years? Oh, it's so long. You got anything like that? Um, I think I would only know it if, I was, if it was offered to me. And they'd be like, ah, oh, no. But I can't think of the last time I threw up on like a... Oh, you know what, what another one was? as um... Uh, Don Tequila. Is that what that Mexican restaurant is yeah. called? Not- if I even sniff it, I'm done. Mm. I want to throw up. For me, it's Buckeyes. Ohio oh, State Buckeyes. no! Yeah, I can't do peanut butter and chocolate anymore. How what? horrifying is that? Oh, at all. You, you like a Reese's, Reese's Cup? Oh, I got oh. Reese's Cup. But that's not really traditional peanut butter and chocolate. No. My mom makes Buckeyes. Food review. My mom makes Buckeyes. What Ohio State makes versus what my mom makes night and day. Ohio State, I can't even eat Ohio State's anymore. It's so plain. My mom breaks up graham crackers, so there's oh. more texture to it. Oh. Holy shit, they're so good. I want these. Yeah, they're amazing. Maybe but, maybe we'll get you off your uh, your sickness. Yeah. Shrimp was like that, but I came back from that. Mm, shrimp would be a tough one. Yeah. Can't do fireball. Yep. Another liquor thing. Yeah. Oh, Jaeger. 
Jaeger for me. However, Jaeger's tough. I am going this Halloween. I'm dressing up as a Bavarian man during October, like but later hosen, oh. fedora hat, and everything. I think I need to bring some Jaeger with me. So I'll, I'll I'll probably throw up on it again, and it'll it'll just make it even worse. You did Jaeger in Amsterdam, and you were fine. Did we? I was doing Jaeger. Were you not? I don't remember doing it. Hmm. I'm sure I can like choke it down, but I just I used to like. This is bad. I used to, in high school. Sorry, mom. I used to, I used to, I used to drink Jaeger all the time. Like that was like our group's drink was Jaeger, and like doing Jaeger bombs. But I, I think I just overdid it during that stretch. Like it was disgusting how much like that was the drink. But yeah, ever since then I haven't really. I, I the second I touched my tongue, I'm like, nope, this is not easy. Yeah, I almost throw up instantly. Yeah, because it's like black licorice. I, yeah, it's. Re- I, I'm tasting it in my throat right now as we're talking about it. <laughs> Pretty bad. Oh, Angry Orchard isn't isn't Cincinnati. It's New York. Upstate? Yeah, Walden, wherever that is. That's upstate. I don't know, mm-hmm. but it sounds like it. We're also drinking wine, because we just recorded a rewind that comes out after this. I want to mix and match. I'm going to try. Man, seven minutes in. Let's get to the news. Good evening. I'm Will McAvoy. And I'm Evan Baxter, and here's what's making news. Good evening. I'm Ron Burgundy, and this is what's happening in your world tonight. Mike, you have the news again this week, because I continue to be a terrible host of the show. James Gunn. Yes, this is, is the big one. Is now, he, it's not, it's not I don't think it's DC, confirmed. But we're not quite sure what he's doing. Oh, he's yeah. doing Suicide Squad too. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's signed on. Right. So he is supposedly writing and directing a Suicide Squad, basically reboot. However, his version supposedly has Deadshot, Harley Quinn, Killer Croc, and who else was in that movie? Joker? Yeah, it, it's basically like, it's the same same characters. But like, I don't think the... Did you just see Suicide Squad? I did not. Okay. A horrible movie. One of the worst. I don't think the cast was the problem with that movie, though. Margot Robbie is, was a really good Harley Quinn, and Will Smith was a good Deadshot. Like, and then everyone else was just kind of bit players. Like, they whatever. They're, they're replaceable. But yeah, I don't think changing the cast is the right decision. Or if he gets a, another good cast, who cares? But does this mean James Gunn is one-dimensional? He can only do... Outcasts have to team up together to make... I think he has a chip on his shoulder. I think he just wants to be like... Fuck you, Marvel. Yeah, I'm going to bring DC to prominence. Yeah. He's the right guy for it. Yeah, but I, I think this is a win for DC, because like, this is your guy to make this kind of movie, but it, it seems lame for him. It is. Yeah. It seems like... Just like bitter, petty. Yeah, it's a very petty move by James Gunn. Give him like the Flash. That could be a fun movie. Yeah, or James Gunn, do your own thing. Yeah, you're doing Suicide Squad. Like that's that came out two, two years ago. Two years ago? Like, what two, the fuck? August of 2016, I think. So yeah. So if it, if this is a sequel, then yeah, that makes sense. If this is a reboot, just do something else. If they do a reboot, don't have the same five characters. No. Because there you have can't. been many versions of the Suicide Squad in the comics. Just pick a different one. But, yeah, are you excited for it? Uh, I'll go see it because I like James Gunn Yeah, me too. But, man, the DC EU Or what is it called now? The Worlds of DC. So bad. Are they just redoing it now? Yeah. Everything's getting good. I think, because, I mean, Henry Cavill has been in and out over the last couple of weeks. No one's really sure where he stands. Affleck, he's got to be dead, right? It's got to be over. Um, they're still working on Matt Reeves' Batman. Which will be good, I think. There was a casting of some kid that didn't look great. Where do you even go with Batman at this point? I don't know. I think don't you, I think you, you just give. I think you give like, Batman a break. Like fifteen years. Yeah. If they so, I think they should just not be doing what Marvel's doing and making universes. It should just be one-off movies. Like there's cool like one-off stories in the comics where like instead of landing in Kansas, Clark Kent lands in I guess Superman lands in the Soviet Union, mm-hmm. and so he grows up in a, as in a dictatorship and shit. It's a really cool cool comic that's awesome yeah they should be doing stuff like that I, I, hopefully that's what this joker movie is it's just a one-off thing and so that's what dc should be, DC should be doing not tr- continuing to try to push this it'll never be marvel yeah i mean i know in the trailers it already shows shazam but the batarang with a superman newspaper keep shazam on his own don't try to fold him into anything else just do because even like the shoehorning in wonder woman was weird it was kind of off by itself, but like the first and last scene, Affleck. Oh right, in, it just just didn't seem necessary. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. They they need to pivot in a big way because it's just not working. But maybe he's the guy that, that can write the ship. I forgot Aquaman's coming out in December. Oh my god, that's right. Do you think that's going to tie in at all to anything? No. 
No. I mean, it is, but, like... It well, because he was in the Just League, but, like... Oh, man. Just, uh, I don't know. Because that's the last thing that is confirmed tied to the to, to what we've seen so far. So either you can just make the movie, not mention it, and just say, like, whatever, screw it. We're just not doing it. But you can keep making Aquaman mo- Man movies if it's good. Or you make the movie, it's shit, which is very possible, even though I like James Wan. Then you just cut it off and then just restart from there. I love how the Cyborg movie got scrapped. Oh, my God. That was never happening. <laughs> <laughs> it had a date at one point. Yeah. yeah, it did. I think The Flash had a date. That movie might still be in production. I, I think have... it is. It's had three directors at this point. I remember one point Bradley Cooper was tied to be The Flash like a decade ago. Oh, wow. Look it up. Dude, George Miller almost made Justice League. Yeah. Like a decade ago. Yeah. Man. That, oh, God. It has to be so sad. Working at for DC at this point, or I guess in the film, just like what are we doing? No direction. No direction at all. He gave the keys to the car to Zack Snyder, who's just it's not good. Who? What? Are there any good Zack Snyder movies? I guess maybe Watchmen. Liam is a big defender of Watchmen. Three hundred. Those didn't get good reviews, did they? I don't know. And they're super stylistic. Like that doesn't really fit. I don't know. Whatever. I guess we'll move past it. I don't. Yeah, I'm. I'm done. I'll watch the James Gunn movie that he makes. Yeah. For him, not really for anything else. Yep. Am I rooting against it? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I am. But I like James Gunn still. Yeah. Coogler. I'm still holding out that Marvel Hardy's in, Hardy's in back. All right, go ahead. No, Speaking of Marvel. It's over. Coogler. Black Panther 2. Set to write and direct. Yep. Black Panther. I think 2020, I saw. Makes sense. Um, They're going to start filming. I start filming in 2020. Or 2018. Comes out 2020. Yeah, you probably think it comes out 2020. I mean, is there anyone else you'd even want to direct this? I mean, this is our guy, right? Yeah. Did he write the first one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is perfect. Yeah. I understand why he wants to do it, too. Yeah. He's going to try to do a trilogy, you'd yeah. think. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Michael B. Jordan is at all in this. I don't think he's going to be. No. It's too bad. Because he was the strongest part of that movie. And it was very clear. I think we said both said this in our review. He only has eyes for uh, Michael B. Jordan. But, yeah, I, I, I imagine... Black Panther will, will kind of be the Captain America going forward from here. Once the old, once the old guard dies or retires or whatever happens in Avengers Four. So yeah, this is our guy. I'm good with it. I'm excited for it. First, yeah. one, first one's overrated, but still fun. So overrated. Mm-hmm. It's probably gonna get a Best Picture now, I guess. It won't. It better not. If I will be staying on a soapbox. Yeah. In no. That, I feel like it didn't even come out this year. It feels like it's an eon ago. Yeah. I was a different person. I feel like Suicide Squad is more recent than Black Panther is. No one's talking about Black Panther anymore. I, 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 I doubt how much impact that movie actually had. People want to make that something that's not. The movie's fine. Yeah, the movie's so fine. I get why it's important, but like... Yeah. Yeah, it's been... And it was good. Yeah, it was good. But... Maybe we won't, we won't see the impact of the movie for another couple of years. Hollywood is a freighter. It takes a while for it to actually change course. They're still so set in their, in their ways at the moment. But yeah, no, this is the year of uh, the minority movie that does that does does gangbusters at the box office. This and or that and Crazy Rich Asians. You can shoehorn Crazy Rich Asians. No, I mean it's true though. It's true. You know? <laughs> I know. Best that should get a best picture. Now. Did you see Aquafina hosted SNL? Yeah, I don't like Aquafina. Though. Neither do I. But Crazy Rich Asian just imprints all over. America. Plus, I follow the entire cast on Instagram. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you follow Aquafina? No, I don't like Aquafina. <laughs> Shocked. Yep. All right, next. Johnny Depp will be in uh, the third one, the third installment back of, um, what are those Harry Potter Fantastic Beasts. Called? Fantastic Beast. I'm just shocked they're going to give him another. Yeah, I saw. They're sticking by him. I saw an article that was like, Johnny Depp feels bad for J.K. Rowling for having to defend his past. Maybe he's a changed man. I mean, even if he is a changed man, I still just don't like Johnny Depp. As an actor or a person? Person, actor, and in this role. He just looks dumb. <laughs> it looks so stupid. I hate the facial when, hair. Oh, facial hair is tough. The eyes, the hair. Dude, when you are gifted Colin Farrell, you use Colin Farrell. Especially because I think all the stuff that came out about Johnny Depp happened like post Fantastic Beast 1 release. So you just, yeah, that's just like his inner whatever. But he, but he really just goes to Colin Farrell. Just fix it right there. God, I'm pissed. <laughs> Pump for the movie, though. Are you? I actually am. The more I see the trailer, the more juiced I am. That comes out soon, right? No, I think it's December. I would consider that soon. Well, yeah, it's this year. Okay. But end of the year. Wow. It's you October, screaming dude. screaming at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's mid-October. Yeah. 
I guess, fine. Here, you can have it soon. Two months. There's cool. still so many movies in between them, though. That's why I don't really consider it to be no, soon. No, there's millions. Yeah. Millions and one. I have nothing else to add to this. All right. To that. Okay. World War Z sequel 2020. Fincher and Brad Pitt back. Fincher not back. Fincher now there. Um, this has been rumored for... Fincher didn't do the first one? No. Hmm. You, you didn't do the first one, obviously? Nope. Me either. I guess the it's not based like, on the book at all. The book is kind of like journal entries and diaries and newspapers from from like the aftermath of the event. So you just hear it through that. But then the movie is just like straight up in the middle of... The, the zombie invasion. Hmm. I guess the the movie's okay. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'm more interested now that Fincher's attached to it. I'll see it. Yeah, it's been rumored for a while that he was going to do it. I mean, him and Brad Pitt go way back. They love each other. They do love each other, and they're damn good together. So yeah, if it was a no name doing the second one, I would not go back and watch the first one. But now that Fincher's doing it, I will go back and watch the first one, and then definitely watch the second one. So I'll probably do the same thing. Yeah, and then this is a little something I added. Oh, how about someone dying on the set of uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Not Won't You Be My Neighbor. The Mr. Rogers biopic that yeah. Tom Hanks is starring in. I don't know what it's called. How does that happen? For the record, uh, by the way, I'm going as Mr. Rogers for Halloween. Oh, nice. Yeah. The the set of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is just a room, so you don't need to do any complex shots where a guy standing 50 feet in the air. Then I can't imagine you're doing anything nuts, any car chases or anything. Like, how does that happen? No, it's like the Notre Dame death. Remember that kid was filming the practices and got blown by a gust of wind and took the tower down? Oh, yeah. He must have just fallen off a scalpel. It's cr- scalpel. That's, that's such a shame. Really Poor sad. guy. Poor movie overall. Yeah. That, that like, production is stunt, cursed. Do you hear stunt actors dying all the time? Not all the time, but... Twice a year? Yeah. I know Deadpool, someone died. And then now Mr. Rogers. Too bad. It is too bad. And also Margot Robbie is now going to be in Barbie. Barbie was supposed to come out this year. It was supposed, supposed to start um, using Amy Schumer, which was supposed to be like... A comedy. A like, comedy. I'm so pretty, but I'm actually not. Yeah. And now they're going Margot Robbie, who's very much who's the Barbie. Who's just the hottest person on the planet. Yeah. So they've done a complete 180 So here. do... So you think... I mean, they can't go that way. You think it'd still be a comedy, though? It can't take itself very seriously right. like a Barbie movie, but it won't Why be Why would like, you want to do this role? Because uh, she's probably getting paid $20 million. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I don't know, though. I'm sure Margot Robbie wants to do this role. Yeah, you feel like she's above that. Because she is. Yeah. And Hathaway's attached to it. Oh. Huh. This movie might not get made still. Don't make it. No one's Who asking for a Barbie this? movie. No one. Unless it's Michael Keaton as Ken again, reprising his role from Toy Story 3. Let's do this. Let's, yeah, let's, let's push forward with this. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't care. That's all I got for news. All right. Let's get to the uh, two good movies this week. Oh, two. wow, that hesitation. Two... Good movies. All right. Want to start with uh, Bad Times? Let's go Bad Times. All right. You can't handle the truth. She's gone from suck to blow. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? If you watch the trailer, that sucks. Don't watch the trailer. Don't watch the trailer. It really ruins a lot of the movie. It doesn't ruin a lot of the movie, but... The first hour of the movie, it ruins, like, the suspense. Like, ooh, what's going to happen? You know, I kind of... A lot of stuff's revealed. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's, it does suck uh, because this movie, this movie was full of potential and doesn't capitalize on a single thing that it, it, that it had in its hands. There's the premise you think like, oh, this could be so cool, and it it's a good movie, great acting, the characters aren't really there, like no one's really a character that you care about, but actors are chewing scenes and they're doing a really good job in it. But yeah, what, what were your initial thoughts? I call this Murder of the Orient Express and Quentin Tarantino movie. Like, if they had a child, they had a child this yeah. is what it would be. It better than Murder in the Orient Express. Oh, way better. Yeah. And it, not as good as a Tarantino movie. Not as good as a Tarantino movie. But you, you can definitely tell it's like an ode, an yeah, homage yeah. to him, for sure. It's almost Brother than Hateful Eight. I, 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 I like yeah. Brother than Hateful Eight. Yeah, me too. I so, don't like Hateful Eight. Very similar to Hateful Eight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the trailer ruined a lot of it. Mm-hmm. I saw the first hour of the movie, I feel like I already saw. Mm-hmm. And I wanted more of... John Hamm. I want. Right? We need more John Hamm. John Hamm is really good in this movie. Uh, Jeff Bridges, I think, is uh, is another standout. I don't know she, who the main girl is. She's really good. She, her singing voice is, is incredible. incredible. Is she a singer? Gotta be. Like, yeah, it's I'll, insane. Um, I'll look her up. Dakota Johnson, who I only know from Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey. Not having seen them, just a, she's good in it, and she's somehow more attractive in this than she is in the softcore sex movie. Way more attractive. The, there's a little girl in it that's good. Hemsworth, when he comes on the scene, man, he eats it up. He chews those scenes. Yeah. So, but I didn't like his character. 
and I kind of thought it was, I don't know. It's very um, sexy, long-haired cult leader that's been done a million times. I hate that. But I hate he, that I think he's just so charming. He's fantastic in this movie. Yeah. Everyone's on their A game. Yeah, even these, um, like the host of the hotel is good. Yeah, the movie is, it's just solid. It doesn't do, it doesn't reinvent anything. It, I think it wastes a lot of potential, but I think you would have a good time with it. She has won a Tony Award for playing the color purple. Oh, nice. 2015 revival, and she won a Grammy Award also for that. For that. So she's got two of the EGOTs. That makes sense. She's 31. She's extremely talented. You'll see more of Cynthia Erivo. Yeah, she's great. In the future, I think. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, but the the premise of this movie is a bunch of strangers meet at a hotel. Oh, she's in uh, Steve McQueen's new movie, Widows. Oh, Widows. Cool. It has a major role in it. So, yeah. Yeah, so the, this hotel is set on two states, the border of two states. Which I loved. Yeah, but it, they don't do anything with it. They really don't. Which is such a shame that it, it is right there for the taking. And they just... They, this could be set anywhere. The world they built was great. Yeah, but it is. At the end of the day, this movie could be set anywhere. So before we get into spoilers, should have been Tom Holland behind the desk. They kind of they, they look alike. I like that guy though. I did too. Yeah, but it'd have been funny if it was Tom Holland. Okay. <laughs> uh, score. Um, I gave it a score in my head when I on the drive here, and that score was an eight point two. Eight point two. Holy shit. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's really solid. Uh, I'm, I am disappointed with it. it you know has what? Its flaws. Too high. Eight point two is way too high. Seven point nine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I definitely say go out and see it. Like, I'll probably watch it again too. Like, if it's uh, on TV, like, yeah. I'm and gonna... I recommend this to a lot of people. Yeah. It's good. I saw it with two people. They both loved it. So. Loves a strong word, but they both really enjoyed it. I think, I think you may have loved it. Eight point two. <laughs> There's things I have wrong with this movie. Yeah, but yeah, seven point nine. Yeah. Thumbs, Thumbs up. up. Recommend. Uh, we'll see it again. To all the Tarantino lovers, out, lovers out there. Oh, it's, also, it's also Drew Goddard, who I watched another movie of his, uh, Cabin in the Woods, this week as well, and he's a uh, writer on Lost, uh, showrunner of Daredevil season one. So I've, I liked a lot of this guy's career, and this is another good outing from him. Um, so spoilers, yeah, man. It being on two states, like I wish there was a moment where like the police come in, but it's not their jurisdiction, so they can't do anything about it. It being on two states means jack shit. Except for the one line we're like, over here you can gamble, and over there you can drink. That's that's the only reason this movie is on a state line. Yeah, and there was any ramifications. No, I, I wanted to play a role, but it just doesn't. But I love how this the line, the state lines are. It's right down the middle of the hotel. Yeah, even in the basement, it's it's always still there. But the jukebox is split right down the middle. Yeah. No, it's a really cool setting that just is completely wasted. Yeah. Yeah. There's no point of it. No. And this movie is very unpredictable. They just kill A-listers willy nilly. John Hamm just gets whacked. We're like, oh shit, that's my favorite character. First three or five minutes, he's the most interesting character, your and favorite character, and he dies. And he's Which is like, good, I like that. He's like the only character. Everyone else is just, there's no, no depth to any of them. There's depth to the singer. To the singer, yeah. Cynthia? Like, is that her name? I can't remember what her name is. I don't know her character's name. Yeah, the but then, name. and it's further proven when they play the roulette, and it's Dakota Johnson and the the, the host, or whatever. I'm like, oh, the kid's dead. Yeah, yeah they're gonna absolutely. Aliens, yeah. And then she dies. Like, oh shit! See, I didn't really know that it was gonna happen. So it is unpredictable. I didn't like the little girl, but I'm never gonna like that little girl. Oh no! You weren't she, supposed she to like her. Yeah, we weren't supposed to. She was the worst. She really she was pissed so me blind. off. Just, yeah. Like, did she like her sister? She probably she couldn't have then. Or was she just so obsessed with Chris Hemsworth? Where I think she was just so obsessed with the cult and yeah. everything. And they had, they had a troubled background. Did you did you like that? How they kept showing the dad and like them hiding underneath the bed. I feel like that didn't pay off. It didn't. Way. No, it didn't add anything. I don't know. I Man, wasn't there was getting a, anything they, from it. So did you like how this how the movie was told, where it jumps around a bit? Yeah, I feel like it really worked in this unpredictable story. Yeah, and also, Nick Offerman gets whacked to start the movie. I was like, oh, Nick Offerman's doing this. I was like, oh, that's why you don't see him in any trailers is because he gets killed. I was wondering, like, was that Nick Offerman? Yeah, and he does come back later in the movie when they show the robbery, but and he looks goofy when you can't see his mustache and hear Nick Offerman's voice. It just sounds goofy. Yeah, it does. He needs to be Ron Swanson all the time. Hearts be loud, guy. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, but it it, it, it jumps around like a, like a Pulp Fiction kind of movie. Yeah, which and the plot's unpredictable. That's why it kind of reminds you of Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, I love. I actually love that and how it kind of just. It, yeah, I love the frame of it. It was like sure. Room One, and then yeah. it did John Ham- John Ham story and stuff yeah. like that. Because the whole movie takes place probably over like what forty five minutes. No, it's over a night. Well, they get there in the middle of the day, and they guess they don't they don't last the night. Yeah, so probably a couple hours. That's true. Do but, you? I like how they never said that it was JFK. Yeah. I would have been so upset if they actually came out and said it, but I love everyone that. knew. Yeah. yeah, He's dead and stuff. And yeah. And the the part about the don't watch the trailer is knowing that he's not a priest. Yeah. Like why, why? Why reveal that? No, no, no. This seems like a weird, odd, specific thing to I reveal. think I would have realized... I don't know. I think you get it early, because she figures it out. I think you'd be like, this doesn't seem right. But I wanted to do that. Right, yeah. I wanted to do a little detective work. Right. And it just... The fucking trailer just... We're not that to. dumb. Yeah. You know? Like, people are going to see this movie. You telling them that he's not a priest, and like, oh, Jeff Bridges isn't a priest. No, like, oh, Jeff Bridges is playing a priest? Yeah. 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 For me, that's more intriguing. Yeah, and I loved how the kid kept trying to get redemption from the priest. Also, so he was killing people in the hotel. No. He's just a war man. 127 kills? Yeah. Dude, no chance in hell. Good sniper. Dude, that's a lot of people. It and is. That guy's young as shit. Have you ever seen American Sniper? I think... You okay? I'm ready to meet my maker. I was about to answer every shot I ever took. What was that from again? American Sniper. Oh yeah, I I watched that. uh, Come to think of it, Bradley Cooper just loves mumbling through. (laughs) One, he's super young, so that doesn't really make sense. And obviously, you can be remorseful for killing people in the war, but like the the amount of remorse that he felt and guilt that he felt, and the shit that he saw in the hotel, I think he think he was just killing people in the hotel. He might have been. A little PTSD action, you think? No, I think he probably told who... We don't even know who the, up, the upper management are, which I liked. Um, he was, they probably like, yeah, kill this guy. You know, I get, the hotel is shady as shit, but they don't really delve too deep into it. No, which was fine. I don't know. I wanted I wanted the, the hotel to be more of a... Play a way bigger role in the movie, because that was one of those interesting parts of the movie, initially like in the, in the, in the build-up, but then it's just never really utilized. I, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. They build a great world, and they just kind of fumble over it. Yeah. You also know the one-way mirror in the trailer, which sucked. Because yeah. that was like... That's like the know. mystery of the... Of like, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I love you could turn the sound on. Yeah. And I love the scene when she's singing, and Jeff Bridges is hammering out the floorboards yeah. to get the money. Yeah. That was awesome. Because that song's so good. The original version or Phil Collins? For the, uh, you can't hurry love. Oh, you just have to yeah. wait. I, 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 I I'm, a I'm a Phil guy. I think Rossi loves that song. Probably. Yeah, makes sense. How much more to add? Where's the ending? I mean, yeah, I knew they were going to get out. He just goes off at everybody, sniping them. Yeah. Yeah, I, li- I like him just killing everyone. Yeah, I did too. And then him getting his... Except the guns and stuff, like with his feet and stuff. Yeah, getting yeah, it was sick. Yeah. And then him getting his penance at the end. Yeah. And then, yeah. She's singing and he and Jeff Bridges is in the crowd. I, I really like the ending a lot. Yeah, um, Jeff Bridges whacked in the face with a glass bottle. Didn't see that coming. That w- yeah, that was a great shot because yeah, you never see her until the bottle h- hits him in the head. Yeah, that was sweet. Um, and then yeah, he's actually a good guy. Like w- the second half that happens, I'm like, oh, another scumbag in the hotel. But he wanted to like drug her, put her away for a bit, get his money, and then leave. He didn't want to actually hurt her. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, you know he, he was. I don't know, John. I mean, John Hamm is just, is just a racist, but it's just so charming. <laughs> We're just like I don't know. I, I, I yeah, I, I love those type of characters. Yeah, was that well, similar to his Mad Men character, kind of, sort of? I only watched like eight episodes of Mad Men. But it takes place at the same time, right? I think so. Maybe that's not sixties. It takes. I think that was like the eighties, right? Or seventies? I don't know. I thought it was like sixties. No, Nixon's president. So the years never revealed, but no, Nixon's yeah. president. Yeah. I love how you just had to pick up on things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The stuff wasn't trying to spoon feed, feed, feed you stuff. Right. Yeah, I I saw it with Arado and then Dick Carlo also texted me that the biggest complaint was that the, the hotel just wasn't utilized enough. But, I mean, that's my biggest complaint. But other than that, I think the movie's solid. First Man, we got anything else to add? <sighs> we did a fine job. Go see it. Go see it. First Man, you know exactly what's going to happen, but it comes and, down to how the movie's told. And how it's shot. And Damn, is it so good. I love this movie. <laughs> really? Yeah. I loved it. It makes that mission seem absolutely impossible. 
It does. Like, I couldn't sit in that shuttle for 15 seconds, let alone go to the moon in it. And it and never... The only time you see the shuttle in space is when the shuttle is a dot in the black void of space. Otherwise, you're in the cockpit looking at buttons, looking at Neil Armstrong's face, or looking out the small-ass window in the corner of the screen. Yeah. Like, you never get a good view of space at all. And I thought that was amazing. The technology they're using is just madness. It's just... They're just shooting a tin can into space. Yeah. And they're and, just hoping it doesn't explode. And there's deaths left and right. Yeah. Yeah, people... So many people die in the Gemini section of this movie. Yeah, it's and you, crazy. You, you feel like, wow, Neil Armstrong is just... He's possessed trying to like in some way his daughter's death is like this driving force to him to to, yeah. to go to the moon i never knew that no that's such an interesting yeah i never knew he had a daughter that died well this movie takes place over the course of seven years and he never ages at all but yeah that for for the entire seven year journey of uh, that that death is is fully driving him to get to the moon do the kids age enough too the kids might not age enough. No, I feel like the one kid doesn't age at all. I feel like he's the same actor. The it's a trumbo character. effect here. A little, little bit of a trumbo. Um, yeah, characters don't really age either. But minor complaint. Spoiler is, he gets to the moon. We all know that. Buzz Aldrin's a dick. I wonder if Buzz Aldrin saw this movie. Because Spo- Corey Stoll is a dickhead in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he's a, just an, a bad guy. Yeah, he is. I don't just, know why they did that. I don't know why they did that either. It was so bizarre. He's barely in the movie, too. He's in it, I think, in three scenes. And every time he's in it, he's just an ass. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, blaming deaths on the on people. It's just like, but... It was Buzz Aldrin that was, like, he was going to, so that's why he died. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that was a weird casting of Corey Stahl, who is, looks so much older than Ryan Gosling, and even though, and Neil Armstrong is, like, ten years older than Buzz Aldrin. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Not great casting. No, weird, weird casting. Oh, uh, but yeah, he's brilliant. It. Jason Clark is really good in it. That guy's Australian. Hmm. The guy from Apes. I had no yeah, idea. He's Australian. I didn't know that either. Just found that out. He's good in this. He's good, yeah. But I think Claire Foy still is the show. Yeah, I imagine the nomination is yeah. coming her way shortly. He made me cry twice during this movie. And the the briefcase scene? The briefcase scene is that was powerful. so good. That's going to be like the, the clip they show during her nomination. And Gosling's scene might very well be... Does he get nominated? See, kid. he's very reserved. Yes. He shows very little emotion. I feel like that's a lot of roles he takes on. Either he's cartoonish, or he shows zero emotion. Like Drive, this, Blade Runner. It was yeah. Like, it was like, very stoic. Yeah. Very um, reserved. Yeah, there's not much dialogue. I was shocked how little dialogue there was in the beginning of this movie. Yeah. Towards the middle, there's a lot of dialogue, but at the uh, beginning of this movie, the first, like, 20 minutes, he barely talks. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, is this a silent movie for Ryan Gosling? He, yeah, he really doesn't speak at all. He's good in it. He's great in it, actually, but I don't... He might not get nominated. He might not get nominated. Because he kind of doesn't love Ryan Gosling, I don't think. Yeah, La La Land and something else, right? He's and two. The Wrestler? Not The Wrestler. Ah, yeah, the, what's that movie called? Wrestler. Not The Wrestler. The place Behind the Full Prince. Nelson. Oh, Full Nelson? That's what the movie's called, right? I don't know. I like, didn't know. came out like in 08. Okay. Best supporting actor. actor. Mm. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm shocked you said you loved it. Yeah, scores. I mean, I guess we'll do spoilers. Because there's, I guess, little things that. Yeah, we'll do spoilers know. now. Um, scores first 8.1. So less than bad times. No, bad times 7.9. Okay, but initially it was. I'm going to go 9 out of 10. Okay. I really like the movie. Not as good as Whiplash. Not as good as Whiplash. I liked it more than La La Land. Not as good as La La Land. Uh, but I see why Chazelle did this. It's so different than his first two movies. Yeah. He, wa- he doesn't want to be labeled as a jazz guy. Right. So he did. And I was waiting for Gosling to play the piano. Waiting for it. Because they mentioned that he played the piano, but he never does. And the piano is shown a couple times, but yeah. Claire Foy only plays it. So. No, the kid the kid plays it. Oh, you're right. She's yeah. just there. She's there. Um, they couldn't do that. They knew they couldn't have right, 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 Gosling right. Tickle, yeah. tickle the ivories. Tickle the ivories. I hate you. Um, yeah, uh, 9 out of 10. Thumbs up. Recommend. This I love the score in this. The Justin yes. Horwitz score. It's good. It's almost an ode to 2001. Yes, for sure. You yeah. get that vibe big time. Yes. This is a movie my dad is going to love, I think. Yeah, I think the baby boomers will eat this up. Yeah. I, I am so fascinated by space travel. I think it's so cool. It's probably like the greatest achievement in human history. I forgot they were engineers. Astronauts. Or yeah. are, are aerospace engineers. Mm. Like, duh, but, like, you forget how smart those guys have to be. Yeah. I love how the, the chapter one, pages one through 604, it's like, and then Jason Clark's like, oh, my God, what am I doing? 
Um, and there's vom- there's dried vomit all of them and yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. All right, so spoilers. So this is based on the book. Is it just a Neil Armstrong biography? Or? Oh, yeah, I, it came out t- 15 years ago. Okay, is is him bringing the Karen bracelet to this to space real? All true. All true. Okay. It's, see, I, I, I it seems re- like that, that would be like against regulations or something. I think he just kind of put it in his pocket. I don't know. But yeah. All, I mean, from what I saw, this said that there was a very true adaptation of Neil Armstrong's life. Mm. One of the best shots is them taking the elevator up and just seeing how massive that rocket this is. This rocket is. It's insane. It just keeps going. Yeah. that would, And then it just keeps breaking apart. Like that, The technology is stupid. It's I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. He always I, dies, I mean, what, four times in this movie? Oh, and then when Jason Clark just explodes... They're just trapped in a tin can that catches on fire and, and kills three people. Like, how would you go back in there? That death was just like, holy shit. Yeah, they're just shooting the shit, waiting for waiting for them to okay it, and then they just die. Those were the people that were supposed to, were supposed to go to the moon. Yeah, they were supposed to be Apollo 11. Die? No one knew that. Yeah. Like, how, many, how many people would die, you think? And They movie? showed two funerals. Oh, they showed Karen's funeral, they show Jason Clark's, and another guy's, right? There's four deaths. Four deaths? Uh... Yeah. Over the course of 13 missions? There was 8 Geminis and then 11 Apollos. Oh, I thought there was like... Oh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. They never show like Apollo 1 through 10, no. though. They show Gemini 1 through... 8. 8, and then... Or 12. 1 through 12. Okay. Wait, I mean, you don't, you don't see each one. You see... No, and... The ones where Neil's involved in, the ones where Jason Clark's involved in. I forget his name. Something White, Ed White, or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, but Sorry. yeah, Buzz... Because he has like the two friends... And you just kind of follow them as, along with him. I don't, I don't really even know what else to say about the movie. It's just, it's just so well done. Uh, the shot on the moon is an all-time shot. Actually, I did not like when they first crack the door. It looks like a Windows 95 background. It looks really bad. Really? But after that, the moon looks awesome. Yeah. Well, the, one, the shot I'm thinking about is when he's actually on the ground. He looks around. Yeah. And you see. Mm-hmm. And they use no sound. And that's Yeah, scene. the second the door opens, is just dead silent. Yeah. Nice Space shot, is wild. So it's just all three for three. Oh yeah, he, the yeah. Dude, he's one of the best working directors right now. Yep. And it's so yeah, this is so different than his first two. Do you think he'll go back to the, the old skies? Stuff? Not the limit for Damien Chazelle. God, oh no, no. Do you think he goes back to a jazz yeah. movie? He will do a jazz trilogy. He's got to. But I think he's in- why is it a trilogy? They're not connected at all. I know, but like either or the Cornetto trilogy. That's way more connected than this. But either way, like, you know, like, in a Ritu's Killing trilogy and stuff like that. Directors have yeah, non-linear trilogies all the time. I guess. I just don't think it's something that he'd be chasing. No, I... I Maybe it's a cute thing he wants to do. I, I don't know. He's a cute guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm super okay with him doing more of this stuff. Like, this is out of nowhere. When I, when I saw that he was attached to it, I'm like, what? That makes no sense. The person who wrote the screenplay... You f- spent four years writing it, uh, just kind of slaving over, trying to get it right. Because there's a lot of years you have to jam it at two hours and 15 minutes, and it's paced I mean, really it's well. Like it, it shows 62 through 69. It shows like 62, 65, 68, 69, I think. It's I think paced it's really, really well. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I love the line. It was like the interviewer goes, what do you want to bring to the moon? And then... But all to be in the dickhead, he's like, I'm bringing my wife's jewelry because who doesn't want to brag and make their wife happy? And then Neil is just like, I just want to bring more fuel if we can. And he, he's just so serious about everything. Yeah, I, I thought that was awesome. That Him and Claire Ford dicking around with the kids was a great scene, too. That's like the one moment of levity that he has. Otherwise, it's all, it's all just dead straight, very serious. The whole entire time. The whole entire time, yeah. Um, Did you like the end? Yeah. Do they don't say anything? I was like, all right, here's Ryan Gosling's Oscar moment. He's going to come out here with a long dialogue. And then it ended. And I'm like, fuck yeah, Chazelle. Yeah. Good. Because yeah, so many movies these days are ending just kind of with this long dialogue, I feel. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chazelle didn't want to do it there. They just kind of look at each other for a couple couple minutes. Touch the glass. Touch the glass. And that's Black. that. Yeah. yeah. So, that's yeah. great. I'm um, totally cool with it. Nothing real. I mean, on the Wikipedia, it only says starring Claire Foy and Ryan Gosling. Like, yeah, it's just their movie, pretty much. Yeah. Jason, Jason Clark probably gets the most screen time of anyone else. Uh, Kyle Chandler, maybe. Yeah. Claire Foy is almost in this more than Ryan Gosling. She's not. She's but not. But, like, she has her own scenes and stuff. Very much She's her own. She's way better, I think. Than Ryan Gosling? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, not way better, but she is the better performance. It's tough. She's to a juicier role, because she, 
she has a range of emotions. Yeah. She's ha- she's cracking jokes. She's funny. She's super sad. She's angry. Like she runs the gauntlet, whereas he is just doing his one thing. You kind of have to be like that though if you want to. Yeah. Do this. If you ever oh. need to stow a guy, get Gosling, baby. Okay, now there's the flag planning controversy. Yeah, they show him. They show the flag. It's not a controversy. It's that, insane. That's like, the, do they want him like, ah, and then jam a flag? Well, the American Beauty, uh, America the Beautiful is yeah. plastic, and then what a bald the, eagle comes shooting you, out in yeah, the back. What do you want? They show the, it's in there. How dare they call this movie unpatriotic? Dude, like you see America, every, they show us. They show USSR. They show Jason. They get mad when they beat us. Like they they beat us in every aspect, and they 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 fully show that. Like yeah. we're getting killed. Yeah. And it, yeah, yeah. Sure, it's not raw raw USA, but it's at the forefront of it. Like you're, you know what side we're on, baby. Like yeah, know, it's insane. I mean, God's not saying do this for America at any point or anything like that. Right. But the the shot I was talking about with the rocket, you you see the American the flag. American flag, United States of America. Yeah. And it shows how all the whole world really cared about this and stuff like yeah. that. And the the French woman's like, I knew the United States. States I was going for me. Yeah, I wanted yeah. them to do it. It's like, what do they have, dude? That's insane. People are so dumb. People suck. People do suck. Yeah. Oh my god. The movie's not doing well in uh, box office. Really? Oh, sixteen million dollars only opening weekend. Yeah, Venom won this weekend. Oh, I thought Star Wars won. Mm. No. Well, Venom holds. Venom won. He's he's finished third. Finished third. Yeah. Damn. How, I mean, what's the budget? I'm gonna say like seventy-five million dollars, right? Oh my god! Wow, I think it's too high. That seems way high. How do you see this doing uh, award season? <sighs> I think it's fringy in like a lot of awards. I don't think it's gonna win much. I think Giselle could get a best director thing. Yeah. I think cinematography is kind of locky. I think it will get a best cinematography nom. I think score will probably get a best score nom. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Claire Foy will get best supporting actress. I think she'll be. And if she is supporting, well, it, it'll fully depend on the rest of the no- uh, possible nominees. Well, she could win. I think. Yes. If she, she's supporting and it's a weak supporting field, she can win. But you would take Gaga over her if you had the vote? Oh, yeah. Right? I wouldn't. No. No. Oh, Gaga. <laughs> um, so the budget's... You're a, little, you're a mon- little monster. What are they called? Little monsters? I, I might be now, man. <laughs> I might be. I saw it again this week. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about we'll it talk in a bit. About it. Budget, $59 million to uh, $70 million. Boy, how did it do overseas? It's got $25 mil right now. I can't imagine it plays all that well overseas. It made $6 million overseas this weekend. Oh, God. Yeah, it's not good. <sighs> Damien. I'm, I'm pulling for it. Damien doesn't This care. will be the movie, unless it's so early, that I'll be pulling for. Come awards time? Yeah. I mean, this I love these Blade people. Runner where, like... Josh Singer's the screenplay. Yeah. That name sounds really familiar. Oh, he wrote The Post and he wrote Spotlight. Oh, wow. Man, his, uh... Based on real life stories, or he's very good. He's very good. I imagine he was nominated for. He probably won for Spotlight, right? He won for Spotlight. Yeah. Good for him. He's really good at adapting. Real life stories. history, American history books. Yeah. Find your niche. Do you your f- thing. You find your niche. It's interesting to see where Chazelle goes from here. Personally, is he, is he slotted to do anything yet? I don't think so. I think he's doing something for Apple. Oh yes, he's making a TV show. Yep, and that's a jazz TV show. There's his trilogy. Uh, maybe. Maybe. We'll get Damon Chazelle next week. <laughs> he's only 33. That's so insane. God, the guy's incredible. He's, he's, been, he's been married twice, too. Oh, jeez. He married that girl, Olivia Hamilton. <laughs> also, you're rocking the bird's nest right now. Oh, my, God, my hair is insane. I haven't bathed today. <laughs> today was a rough day. I'm not cutting that. <laughs> Please. I have friends. Yeah, the Eddie. That's his next thing. He's filming it right now. And that stars... It's not announced. But yeah, dude. Oh, it's on Netflix now. Hmm. I guess it changed. The series will be, the series will be set in Paris and feature dialogue in English, French, and Arabic. Original music for the movie and stuff. Yeah, man. I'm juiced. Chazelle is my hero. Yeah, he's great. Um, anything else to add about First Man? Oh, I did. Anytime there's a Peter, Paul, and Mary song in the movie, it automatically gets a couple extra points on me. 500 Miles was featured in this movie. It's also featured in St. Louis Davis. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> nice. I also wrote something else down. Oh. In my notes, I put Claire Foy for Heisman. <laughs> the spinning chair and stuff like that. Just the stuff they had him do was just seemed so barbaric. Oh, no. What? So the goal of that is just to try to keep that thing centered? Yeah. Yeah, even just the flying seems so hard. Like the dual joystick, and it, it just like, it's like centimeters of difference makes like, oh, my God. And when it's pitch black and they can't see what they're trying to go for, and then all of a sudden the sun comes out and you see the reflection, it's like, oh. 
You're finding a needle in, the hay in a haystack. In an infinite <laughs> haystack. Chazelle did such a good job of drawing on other space movies, but at the same time, not wasting, not uh, knowing that that we're kind of fatigued on space movies and not focus on the same stuff those movies do, you know? Because, like, that shot when the sun's coming up very much feels like 2001. Mm -hmm. The score very much feels like 2001. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, you know, gravity feel to this movie at certain points. There's a lot of uh, Apollo 13 at some points. Apollo 13, for sure, yeah. Especially when they're trying, they're, they're, you know, the Apollo 13 that, you know, how he getting, connecting to the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is such, like, a big thing. Mm -hmm. in that, and, like, they show that here, yeah. but it's only, it's a half second. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't, they don't dwell on things that we've already seen in yeah. movies. Where, where would you rank this in terms of space movies i like apollo 13 a lot yeah me too i haven't seen it enough though it's been a while since i've seen it I it's, again. it's been probably about six years for me yeah. but i really like that movie mm -hmm. that's like a one of the that's like a top 20, 25 movie for me I, i'd say so this is not as good as that it, it's better than gravity it's better than gravity i don't, gravity. Like, gravity. I don't like gravity either i would almost give it a, i would give it a thumbs down yeah i don't like it at all but it's better than it's better than Gravity. It's weird to compare like 2001 and this. Yeah, it's different. You, you, Very different. You can't do that. Martian is also kind of weird to say like that, but yeah, I, I, I like these about equal. I probably like this more than The Martian. I do like The Martian a lot, though. Yeah, they're probably about equal. Martian's really funny. Martian's hilarious. Oh, how about A Star is Born being a drama at the yeah, Golden Globes? What? Dude, they're the worst. They just don't make sense. No, they don't. All right, want to get into what we watched? We will get into what we watched. All right. I actually watched stuff this week. I watched... I think just Halloween, which we'll have an episode coming out about, but I don't think I'll watch anything else. Oh, Always Sunny. Very good. Or this episode was, was really funny this week. But yeah, no other movies or anything. So I saw Halloween. We have a re rewind coming up soon. I saw Private Life, that Paul Giamatti Netflix movie. Oh, yeah. It's about um, a fam a couple in their late 40s, in their early 40s, they can't, get, they can't have a kid. Mm. And all the stuff they kind of go through and try to have a child. So subject matter that you really haven't seen portrayed on screen. It's sad. It's kind of tough to watch at times. You really feel for them. Very likable characters. I love Paul Giamatti. Yeah. And um, it's really good. I don't really recommend it to a lot of people, though. you got to know what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. I give it like a an, an 8. I thought I was like it more than I would, because IndieWire is just talking up a storm. Yeah, that quote we had of it, it was like, this movie's in incredible. Yeah. This movie we made. Yeah. Um, IndieWire has said it's... The best indie of the year. Their 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 writer said it. So I liked it. Didn't love it, but you know, I I I, I, I definitely recommend it to you people that just. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I don't think awards time will do much. Okay, that was my, that was my if, question. If anything, um, no uh, random like nomination for Paul Giamatti. I, I don't think so. No. Paul Giamatti didn't get nominated. I don't think he's ever been nominated, which is crazy. Sideways. No, I no. didn't get high for that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I could watch Paul Giamatti do anything, and he's playing like an English professor in this. I feel like he always plays like an English professor in everything. Um, typecast. Kind of typecast as an English professor. But it's really sad because the wife has like this really successful career as a writer, and she kind of said that she like chose writing instead of raising a family, and now she's kind of like trying to backtrack on that. Mm. So you feel for her. It's kind of a, it's kind of a feminist movie in, in, in that sense. It's good. Oh, like, I watched Cabin in the Woods. Oh, uh, yeah. I are you familiar with this movie at all? Ish. I'm gonna go with a no actually. Okay. So it's like a kind of a spoof. Not really a spoof, but it it like looks at horror movies in a different way. Where like so people go to a cabin in the woods, but like the cabin is set up by people that are like are Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford from Get Out and Billy Madison, like the dad from Get Out. They play these guys that are like directing the cabin to kill people and stuff. So it's like. Like when someone dies, like they go nuts, like they're loving it. It's like they're they're, they're kind of like the audience, like in a normal like like me watching Halloween. I'm laughing when people are dying, like I'm loving it. So it's kind of messed up when like they're laughing. It's like oh shit, like should we be laughing during horror movies when people are dying? Like that's kind of messed up. But they, oh, what a cool premise. Yeah, it's really it's a really cool premise. But it's Drew Goddard who did Bad Times, Chris Hemsworth again, a film reel plays a plays a role. There's a lot of things that carry over, which is pretty funny. But it seems like a waste because the first thing you see are Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford, like in the director's room. It's like, oh, I wish that like was revealed later because there's a moment. Do you, are you gonna see this movie? Someday. I'll, I'll say the less spoiler of it. There's a moment where like, a bird hits an invisible wall around the cabin. It's like, oh, that they should have showed that before they showed Richard Jenkins. So you're like, wait, what's going on? And then you slowly figure out that there's 
people behind it. But then again, Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford are the best part of the movie. They're hilarious together. So I did want to see more of them, and you get that the way it's shot. But I think it could have been more interesting if you slowly figure out that what's going on like, with the characters is that they're being puppeted, like they're being played. But overall, a really good movie. Like, 8 out of 10. Would watch it again. And I watched it with a group, too, so we were having a good time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Would you watch First Man again? Yeah, I said I would, yeah. No, oh, I didn't say that. I, I would, too. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch anything else? Saw Stars Born Again. Oh, yes. You texted me, but then you, you, you held off. So I, I'm a nerd. I was keeping time on my phone. Stopwatch to actually figure oh, out how much fluff nice. there is. So the scene where Dame, the, 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 the Dave Chappelle scene where Lady Gaga comes to Memphis and says, hey, if you get drunk again, I'm leaving you. Or so whatever. you think that's the start of... If that's the start, that's exactly halfway through the movie. Okay. The Grammy scene is exactly 75% of the way through the movie. Okay. So, so when... Uh, you may have not marked this. When does he call her ugly, but that gets resolved in like 15 seconds? 70% of the okay, movie. Okay, so then I'd say the Grammys is probably... Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of ice cream. Do you think if think it's almost Lady Gaga's fault that there's not enough tension in the movie? What do you mean? You think it's the, the way that she's playing that character? Oh, no. It's the script. You think it's more script? Way more script. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's not her fault that she just forgives him right away. But could she show more attention and maybe be like... I guess I forgive you, kind of, but you're like, I don't think she actually forgives him. Uh, maybe, but there's it, still it a lot of time afterwards until more conflict comes in. So even if she doesn't play, play it that way, it's still like it was just a thought process. Yeah, I don't. No, yeah, that's too much time of nothing happening. Yeah, it's not a perfect movie. No, but that soundtrack is so good. It is so good. Yeah, and like I said last week, if it's just the fluff for two hours, I'm having a really good time with it. I'm not ranking it very high, but I'd, w- I'd watch it every every day and just listen to the, to the music. But as a Oscar-worthy mo- movie, it needs to have these certain things in it, and it just doesn't have that until way too late, in my opinion. Yeah, but if it's one best picture, worst movies have one best picture. Oh, yeah, for so. sure. Was your rank change or anything? Still loved it? Still loved it. Yeah. I'm cool with... Uh, the soundtrack probably boosts this movie up Which a whole Which is totally point. fine, yeah. Yeah. It's just fine. So... Yeah. I'm cool. To, I'm cool. The nine point two that I gave it. Cool. Yeah. And then anything else I see? Oh, uh, bad grandpa. Not bad grandpa. What was the movie that? Dirty grandpa. Yeah, dirty grandpa. Watch last. Have you seen that movie? No. Watch last fifteen minutes of of uh of it. That movie is so bad. Why did anyone agree to do that? Is it Spike Jones? No. He so. probably produced it though. Maybe. Because it's uh, not. No, 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 no. Not the Jackass movie. Oh my God, Robert De Niro. The Robert De Niro, Aubrey Plaza. Why Plaza's did you watch a- that? It was on TV. I was looking at the channels yesterday. Last 15 minutes of it. There's 15 minutes left that go. There was left in the movie. Is it R? Is it PG-13? Yeah, 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 it's R, I think. It's hard to tell on TV. But there's, like, Robert De Niro hooks up with Aubrey Plaza at the end of the movie. I'm spoiling Bad Grandpa, I mean, uh, Dirty Grandpa here. I think they show that in the, in the trailer, though. They have a kid together at the end. What? And they get married. Oh, my God. And it's like they... It? Huh? Like company. What co- is it a Sony uh, picture? Probably. I don't know. It's horrible. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't know why any of them agree to do that. They're all good careers at this point in time. De Niro has been weird the last couple of years. He does not say no to anything. No, he really doesn't. And Zac Efron be... isn't picky either. No, he's not. He's been a lot of bads. I like Zac Efron, but he's been in some shit. Um, yeah, dude. If if I'm De Niro, I'm like Jack. Where I just retire unless, like, Scorsese comes to me or... Yeah, Scorsese is De Niro, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just waiting for my guy to be like, hey, I have a role for you. Or like, he did good work with David Russell, SLP, yeah. and American Hustle, stuff like that. He still does good work. He just... He just does some garbage. So many movies. Dude, you're Robert De Niro. You don't need any money. Just do the good stuff. Is it that hard? A younger generation thinks Maybe. Robert De Niro's a joke. No. <laughs> some people. Dude, Pacino's the same way, though. Pacino was in, like, Jack and Jill or some shit. Pacino's in something coming out soon. What is Pacino in? I just saw it on Wikipedia the other day. I was surprised. Anyways, yeah. Pacino is like that, though. He what? Does, he does bad movies, He's too. in a lot of bad movies. When's the last good thing Pacino did? Dude, probably a long time ago. Oh, um... Did you watch that Paterno movie? No. Is that good? I don't know. I didn't watch it. It's on HBO. No. Oh. Probably should. Maybe that. If he was good in it. Was that this year or last year? I feel like it really recent. I'm gonna yeah. say this year. Early this year. Oh. The Beer. It's just beer. What kind of beer? 
Uh, I'd like a keg of beer, please. Hey, Johnny, how about a beer, huh? Better when I'm drunk. Better than I remember. Better than I remember, too. What, I buy a six-pack? I guess if I'm getting... If I ever if I'm have... Getting, I'm not getting this. I'm gonna say no. If it's offered to me, or if it's the only cider on tap, that's fine. But if I'm ever getting a six-pack of cider, I'm getting Strongbow or some other... I'm gonna venture out a little bit. I, I'm not getting this... Yeah, well, let's be honest. I can't ever see myself ordering a cider. I really don't like them that much. But they're gluten-free. Maybe I'll give them another chance. You should. It could be your lifeline. I will not buy this in a six-pack again. How about that? Fair. They do have um, different flavors. I don't know. It's very standard. It's fine. Like, if it's at, if I'm at a party and it's there, I'll drink it. Yeah, we'll never, yeah, I'll never turn it I'll down. I'll turn it down, but I'm not going to go out of my way to get it. And, it. and it's very often where it's the only thing on tap. Only cider only on tap? Yeah, only cider on tap, which is unfortunate. Again, it's okay. It'll play. Yeah. All right, anything else to add, Mike? Nope. Thanks for listening, guys. Check us out on Twitter, movie underscore Rebrew, me, Cash Money Keegan, Mike underscore Ogle Bay, uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube. Follow us there. We appreciate it. Next week, we're giving the reins over to Liam Garvin and Antonio Zada, where they're doing Zoda? I get so in my head when I say Antonio's name. Antonio, I apologize. They're going to be doing a Halloween episode. Antonio's last name starts with a Z. Yeah. How about that? The more you know. Um, he's been on the show twice and you don't know that uh, yeah so look forward to that I'm excited to hear it because they know more than we both do about oh, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to this podcast yeah me too listen to it and they'll probably go on incredible tangents about Narnia and, and the like you know Narnia is coming up you never know where these guys are going to go but supposedly the main subject will be Halloween movies uh, and then we'll be back for Halloween mid 90s and Something else, I think. Beautiful we, Boy at some point. Beautiful Boy. Yeah, there's a couple of good movies coming out in the next two weeks that we'll be covering when we when we come back. But until then, enjoy. We'll be drinking Nosferatu, too, in honor yeah. of Halloween. Enjoy, Liam and Antonio, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> God. <laughs>